first data for manifestation, trying to map the regulatory architecture of the genes wing A that we know is very important to establish patterning of different elements in the wings of wing phallic butterflies. So, so uh, one of the goals in evolutionary biology is to try to understand the processes and uh, the processes that are involved in the origin of novelties, how those novelties are maintained in population and then how they diversify. Uh, one way to do this is by um, trying to identify the variants underlying the phenotype. Um, in, now in the case of morphological diversification, we know gene uh, regulation plays a very important role. And in this, in this cartoon, what I'm trying to show is how a small modification in the cis regulation of gene can affect the phenotype. So for the same gene in these two butterflies, uh, the presence of this cis element or like an enhancer uh, will end up in the expression of this gene in this yellow spot. So this is an example of how these small sequences can affect phenotype. Um, but by identifying these different elements, we are accepted to understand the role of gene regulation in shaping morphological evolution. Now, the gene that I'm interested in is wing A, and uh, here I'm showing you uh, an example of the type information that we know uh, about the function of this gene. So, this is an example in the lady fancy butterfly. And we know if the gene um, is expressed in the imaginal disk of uh, the caterpillar. And also, uh, this gene uh, codes for a signaling protein, so it creates a uh, concentration gradient in the tissue. So if we uh, change those concentration issues with concentration gradient uh, in the tissue using a drug like heparin, we can see a gain of function in this case. So if we focus in this part of the wing in our control, it has this nice pattern, but in, when we inject the heparin, we see an extension of this melanin pattern. Now, if we use uh, crispr cas to remove the function of the gene, uh, in this case, we see a decision of those melanin patterns. So, if we put all this data together, um, we can tell that the function of patterning of this gene is in the central part, uh, and some elements in the border. And for this specific species, we have function in the eye spot in the forebrain. Now, um, <coughs> like I mentioned before, this gene has been described or characterized for different species of infalids, and there's a common pattern, that this is these two lines with a strong pattern in the middle, and, but there are some species that have this novel of different elements. So, like, for example, in this butterfly, we have expression in the eye spot. So we have a gene that has very conserved uh, expression elements, but also new domains. So my objective is to try uh, to characterize uh, the regulatory architecture of the gene, especially to know how many and which are the elements that are modulating the expression of conserved patterns and also of those novel elements. And for this project, I decided to start with monarch butterflies, and um, the reasons are that this butterfly is a basal lineage the inside the nephalus. Also, we have a genome, and they are easy to maintain in the lab. So the first question is, is we name the spread in the wings of this butterfly? And the answer is yes. Uh, and very interesting, it has some of the conserved elements in the border part of the wing, but also has like this strong element in the middle. But more exciting is this expression around the vein but that we haven't seen in any other mentality before. So <coughs> to start to identify the regulatory elements, I start with a like the traditional way is to look in sequence conservation. So I got uh, sequence genomic sequences of all these butterflies from where I was able to get this uh, the structure where I have my favorite gene plus the neighbor genes, and the idea is that the cis regulatory elements are either upstream, downstream, or in the income of these genes. So, after multiple alignments, uh, I got this conservation plot where 
uh, we can see like extremely thin regions are highly conserved, but also we found no coding sequences that have really high conservation. And if we look closer, some of them are conserved. Um, are unique to the, this family, and some of them are present in all the species that I am looking for. Now, this is great. We have 34 conserved regions in no coding uh, sequences, but um, like any other developmental gene, this is not telling me if they are important or not to patterning in the wind. So, to go around that, the second approach I'm using is this technique called a tactic. And a tactic is one of those epigenomic techniques that are very popular right now. Uh, in, it allows me to look in a specific developmental stage and in a specific tissue at uh, regions of open chromatin. And open chromatin is basically open for business. So the DNA is uh, accessible to interact with transcription factors that will activate or uh, repress the function of the gene. <coughs> So the data looks like this. I have here a um, forward, forward and hind wing of modern butterflies, my favorite gene, the two neighbors. And these bits that you can see here, those are basically regions with open chromatin. So open for business. So this is happening there. Now, uh, the significant bits are marked by this track. And if I overlap those with the conserved regions I showed you before, this is the second. Uh, track over here, only four regions are conserved in the conservation and these uh, epigenomic data, which is really nice because we have now some 34 six that I have before, and I have four regions that are probably very important for the conserved patterns uh, that this gene is showing the way. Now, if we, if you notice, there are other things that are uh, the regions of open, or the open chromatin uh, that are very significant <coughs> and are very enriched in this track, but those uh, regions are not concerned with other butterflies. And the idea is that those are uh, good candidates for uh, regulation and modulation of genome, these other regions that we don't see in other butterflies. So, in summary, um, I have right now four candidate regions for this concert pattern uh, that I can start to look in other butterflies. Then, um, although conservation is a very intuitive way to look functionality, uh, to find normal regulatory elements, maybe it's not super useful. In this case, we found like eight elements that could be really <coughs> important to modulate the expression of things around the thing. And my next work, or what I'm doing right now, is using those conserved regions, those candidate regions I have right now, to do functional annotation with CRISPR Cas9, and also because my interest is to do like a macroevolutionary study how these uh, two regulatory elements have been evolved. Uh, I am collecting uh, data from open chromatin or from other butterflies from the genomes are available. And with that, thanks to the <laughs> Villa, uh, and Cornell, uh, in a separate funding, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good stuff. Um, but I was wondering if you got the chance to look at the conserved elements more closely, and if there is evidence of conversion in evolution, or like uh, accumulation of uh, uh, accelerated sites. Yeah. No, well, that's what I'm trying to do right now, to start to look those regions out. I did like a two part of the screen, and one of the things I wanted to be sure that there were no repeats or things like that. So those areas are, they don't have repeats, and they, they are kind of small, especially in the ataxic data. So they are probably a good candidate for binding sites, but I haven't checked it for like the five minutes. So that's 
why uh, I'm using this ataxic data because this is specific for the tissue and for the species I'm working on. So if I get uh, the idea to get uh, data of this type for other species, is I can compare better uh, because binding size can be very, uh, I mean, the parts that can be conserved could be very small. So I want to compare better those peaks of areas that in theory are open for business uh, compared to conservation to see which one gives me a better idea. I wonder how confident you are that the novel expression pattern for the Wente and the Monarch is actually due to this regulatory changes at Wente rather than to expression changes in an up upstream factor. It's, it's like, like another thing, but okay. Um, whatever is activating in A at the moment, uh, we have it will have some kind of element that will bind there. So, yeah, there could be a change in the in the transcription factor, or whatever is upstream of A to set up the pattern. But uh, there has to be some kind of signal in the element that will uh, read that. So, I expect that one of the hypotheses actually that we are trying to measure is we see changes in the upstream or in the downstream. So. There's a bunch of cool, uh, questions that I would want to try to answer in this type of data. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>